Welcome to Exodus Season 3, Genesis. Before we begin, we must do some initial setup that will only take a moment. First off, I will need you to choose your gender. This will determine the voice that each person will hear when the player speaks in-game. Once each participant has chosen a gender, please proceed to the next step. I'm the former Exodus producer and winner of Exodus Season 1. Thank you for selecting your gender. As the Season 3 grants the player the ability to make decisions, each decision you make will have consequences as the story develops. Each player needs to decide between being a chooser or a non-chooser. Choosers gain the ability to pick decisions that influence the path of the story. At least one player must be a chooser. Non-choosers, on the other hand, can see decisions that choosers can make but cannot actually choose a decision. Players that should have a non-chooser ability are players who tend to make decisions rashly without thinking. Once all players have selected to be a chooser or a non-chooser, please proceed to the next step. Unlike most Minecraft maps, Exodus Season 3 contains themes that may not be suitable for younger audiences. These themes were not used lightly and serve to impact the story in meaningful ways. Themes that some players may find troubling include the subjects of terrorism, murder, cults, and death. Any similarities to real life persons, objects, or beliefs is purely coincidental and do not necessarily represent the views of anyone who worked on the project. If you wish to begin the map, Please proceed by choosing the correct decision. Thank you. How does one tell a story such as this? One where so many people died for causes they believed to be just. A story where there was so much pain and suffering and every single decision shaped the future of humanity. I suppose it's best to start at the beginning. Two years ago, I was selected to participate in a government-funded game show which was hosted by a delusional yet clever man named Red. I won the first season of the show and was rewarded a mansion on a private island in one of the few green zones on the planet. On that note, if you haven't noticed yet, Earth is now a polluted mess that most people consider beyond fixing. It's a terrible place. At any rate, a year later, I returned as a producer for the show, with the second season taking place on the nearby planet of Venera. But events didn't go according to plan. We were attacked by a cruel and calculating alien warlord named Lord Iverin, who we initially believed to be working alone. But by the time we realized the truth, it was too late. The Exodus host, Red, had secretly orchestrated the entire attack so that he could steal Iverin's mind control weapon and use it to control everyone on Earth. Red made sure that almost every single person involved in Season 2 was killed or eliminated so that the public would never know the truth. I am the only witness to his atrocities and he's had me locked up in a white box for the past year. I'm not completely sane anymore. I see things. I see things from my past. These visions haunt me every waking moment. But considering that I'm still capable of understanding that they are hallucinations, I think I'm doing pretty well. I just hope one day I can get out of this box and save the world from whatever Red's planning. <laughs> you killed them. You killed them all. Those thousands of zombies in season one were actors. And you cut them down like they were nothing. And you slaughtered the contestants of season two. And you facilitated the extinction of the Dendron. You are a 
monster. <laughs>Sealed the doors. Cover me while I cut the locks. There we go. Let's go. That was intense, wasn't it? Haven't had that much fun since the quarantine. Greetings, producer. I'm Sarah Harding. I was an intern for Exodus during that bloodbath on Venera. I survived just like you, but instead of imprisoning me, they tried to kill me. Several times. I represent the Division of the Phoenix. We exist with the sole purpose of saving the planet from whatever nefarious plans the government concocts. You haven't seen the outside world in a while, have you, producer? Land here, brother. Follow the path, producer. See what has become of our beautiful world. When you are done, come join us in the monastery at the top of the mountain. Together we can rise from the ashes. Look at the world. It 
it's falling apart. If I was still alive, I would be doing humanity a favor by enslaving them.
I'm so glad to hear that you survived that awful tragedy on Venera. I was told you're on some space station now and will be transferred home soon. I can't wait to see you. And neither can Chloe. We miss you. She's in the upper room now, building a pillow fort. <laughs> Just like her mother likes to do. Listen, when you get back... What? What the? Hopefully this is the right house. Bring me the girl. Shh, shh, shh. Calm down, Chloe. I work with your mother. Sir Harding, right? Good, 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 good. We have the right house. Tell me, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a doctor. 
A doctor? Now that's a noble profession. This planet could do with a few more doctors. Heck, it's a lot more useful than most of the rabble out there. Dad? Daddy? Oh! Oh, he's fine. He's just been liberated, is all. Uh, but we're here to talk about your mother, Chloe. She knows some things that she shouldn't. Some very, very dangerous things. Things that could get people hurt. And there's a chance she told you and your dad. And we can't have that. No, don't cry. Shh, shh, shh. Uh, there is no reason to be afraid. It'll all be over. Oh, stop crying. Ugh. He's dead. Like your mother. And now you. I'm sorry. So, so very sorry. <sighs> Burn the place down. Yes, sir.
summit. What awaits you at the top? You've seen the outside world. How sick it has become. People are suffering and there is nothing we can do to help them. But out of the pain comes enlightenment. We believe that humanity can rise from the ashes and be reborn. Just like a phoenix. Oh, spare them the recruitment speech, Paul. The producer is on our side. They share no love for the Union. You can never be too careful. I am Paul Upentire, Speaker of the Phoenix and leader of the Phoenix Division. It's a pleasure to meet you. As it is to meet you, producer. You're a legend among us. You may not know it, but you started our order. Sarah here witnessed you stand against the host on Venera. You stood against the government and their heinous goals. Producer, you and I have seen what the host and the government are capable of. We have to prove that we are not content with their plans. In recent months, we have begun taking aggressive tactics against them, trying to get their attention but they brush us off as if we were a fly on the wall. We started out with military and commercial targets. When that didn't get their attention, we had to shift our focus to civilians. They hear us now. You're targeting civilians? We don't have a choice. We have to spur the civilian population to take action against the government. It's the only chance we have for success. We have to get people angry. But our next target is a military installation. If we can destroy it, we'll be able to cut off the government's ability to send in reinforcements to defend the capital. You might have seen a large suspension bridge to the south when you were scaling the mountain. That's our target. Tell him the rest, Paul. I'm going to make sure the team is ready. Sana will take you and a small team to one of our outposts. There you will split up from the team. Use a boat to enter the bridge through a service hatch and make your way up to the bomb sites and plant the bombs. After that, make your way to the extraction point that Sarah gives you. Um, I don't know if I want to do this. We're all like that, producer. Unsure if our current course is the right one. But rest assured, the Phoenix has spoken. Have faith. I am. Good. Now, go meet with Sarah on the landing pad. Your initiation as a member of the Phoenix begins today. Hurry, producer. We don't have all day. We have a bridge to destroy. Let's move out!
Here we are. My late husband used to fish here on the weekends. It was a lovely little spot. All right, let's get moving. Teams one and two, prepare to move to your positions on the east and west side of the bridge. Producer, get in a raft and paddle your way to a service hatch at the westernmost spire. I'll relay the next step when you arrive. All right, remember people, this is a stealth operation. We can't afford to be spotted before the bombs are planted. Have faith in the Phoenix. The Phoenix watches over us all. All right, now make your way up the stairs to the scaffolding section. Careful, guards are likely out and about. Hold there. There's two guards above you. Wait to see if they're going to move out. <sighs> I'm bored. I wish something would happen. Anything. Wait, what did you just say? I wish something would happen. You have doomed us all! What? Have you not watched the movies? Every time a guard says, I'm bored, or I wish something would happen, in the movies, something happens, and they end up dead. Well, nothing's happened. I think we're in the clear. For now. Looks like they want something interesting to happen. It would be a shame if we kept them waiting. Take them out quickly and keep moving. Oops. Something happened. <laughs> Good job. Now plant the bombs in the designated locations. Also watch your step. We don't want you to fall.
Phoenix is proud of you, producer. Time to get to extraction before we blow the bridge. The way back has too many guards. We'll have to get you out some other way. Climb up the ladder in the center. It'll take you to the top of the bridge. Careful. There's likely a lot of soldiers up there. Whoa. Hold up. We got the base commander just around the corner. Wait until he leaves. Yeah. I'll be headed to the theater in a few minutes. I'll be giving a speech about my... sister. Thank you for the condolences. <sighs> Hollis was a great captain, and it's a shame she didn't make it. At least she died a hero. She saved as many people as she could. Yes, ma'am. I'll be sure to mention it. Yes. Thank you. Have a good day, Madam President. Captain Hollis was on the Temerity with us. Who was that? That's Ryan Monroe, Captain Hollis's younger brother. I assume he's been kept in the dark regarding the true circumstances of his sister's death. Keep moving. Go through that broken window. Make your way east. Extraction will be towards the east end of the bridge. Captain Hollis was a hero. She didn't deserve to die. She was a victim of corruption and greed. If you see any Phoenix terrorists, let us know. No funny business.
Hey, you! Hold it right there. You're on government property. Wait a minute. You look familiar. Yeah. I'm one of your soldiers. You are? I don't recognize you. What's your ID number? A four five seven G six. What kind of ID number is that? Drop your weapon. I'm taking you to the detention center. Blow the bridge. It's now or never. I'm sorry. What? There's too many soldiers on the east end of the bridge. Extraction has moved to the...